Hello, my name is Omar Rampasad. It is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019 at 3.03 p.m. in Toronto. So I'm going to uh, show you today's sampling of um, of my um, tagging, microwave tagging. So my cell phone is on, so this is a cell phone. So I'm gonna take the cell phone away from my hand detector away detector away so let's switch to my body so the the uh, detector doesn't always go off because the signals are downloaded then stop then downloaded again because there's I'm assuming a buffer in the cell phone so I'm going to show you the tagging of my body and I'm wearing a sleeveless so you could see um, my um, pressure uh, my, um, cuffs with nothing underneath my arm so I'm not this is uh, the real thing so this is uh, the tagging of my body so phone take the phone away body and again it's on and off just like the phone on and off when the signals are downloaded it goes on um, when it's not downloading it's off so right now no download into my body um, just got uh, a slight pain on the on the knee so on And my ear is hurting. Full body scan. My back is hurting and I don't have any magnets on my body. And my obliques. My obliques has been tagged last night very, very um, painfully. So the power is turned up on my obliques on my back, as you can tell. And it's constant. So if it's pulsed, but it's constantly pulsed. So last night around three o'clock, I got up and I tweeted this. The uh, power was turned up so high, it literally felt like uh, my internal organs were getting squished. My lungs um, and uh, the breast and the rib cage was actually feeling as though there was this intense pressure being put on it. That's because the uh, the power was turned up so high. So less power, more power, less power. So let's see if we get a reading. Went up to 1200 there. So it's all over the place. So right now I'm not getting very high. It went up to 900 there, 1100. So last night it was turned up to over 1500. It was very, very, very painful. And um, I got palpitations, um, big palpitations yesterday or last night, around the time I tweeted about it. So when the pressure is turned up, when the pressure is turned up, uh, it definitely put pressure um, on the heart and uh, and it causes palpitations. 
There is no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. So, so I'm going to talk about um, the um, the targeting that I'm experiencing, um, and what happened to um, to cover the trafficking initially. Uh, this is years ago, and uh, in retrospect, given everything I know now and everything that's happened and putting things in perspective as they happen. Uh, remember, this is a dynamic situation. Things changes by the hour because this is an ongoing targeting program. So at this point in time, my understanding of the, um, and I just got a, uh, a burning sensation on my, on my chest. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to take my pressure as that happens. So, um, so um, let me go back to the topic I was talking about just now. So, the, um, the this whole program, the flagging, is uh, a cover for um, for uh, trafficking. So, I was flagged based on lies told by I'm suspecting the building superintendents and maybe other workers in the building and residents in the in the building and uh, I was flagged so none of this was disclosed to me uh, none of this what I'm going to talk about was ever disclosed to me I know about it uh, because I'm being harassed about it so um, I heard that um, my unit was on a drug bust list when I had it on sale and I wasn't here. My unit was checked for drugs. Um, I heard that on, se on several occasions, and because I was flagged and it just was not disclosed to me, somebody in the building, I'm not sure who, uh, whether it's management or the resident, I'm not sure. Somebody in the building got uh, stip because his name keeps coming up over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, got stipped to come into my unit and check it and he, he found blood on my sheets and um, and uh, and what this was taken to mean that maybe I'm injecting myself with drugs this is while I'm going to school and I'm working full-time as an accountant coming in late working late uh, because I had a lot of expenses um, I live alone I, I'm, I'm fully self-supporting um, at the time, I was fully self-supporting, supporting a car um, and uh, paying my mortgage and maintaining my home, maintaining myself and doing other things as well. So this took a lot of time and a lot of overtime as well. So I was working. Um, anyway, so um, the person who flagged me was working with the cops who came into my home. And this is what I'm being harassed with, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I'm being harassed with repeatedly. Uh, and Stip came in and checked my home and got blood on my sheet and that and he took that to mean or they, it was taken to mean that maybe I was in drugs and I'm injecting myself. Um, I also did a video of um, a sofa that I had for years and uh, suddenly the spring underneath was broken. So I lifted the cushion and um, the, um, the, clo the cloth that was covering the spring was torn. It was actually it wasn't torn, it was cut in several spots. So um, it looked like somebody was searching for something, maybe searching, somebody probably had somebody in here searching for drugs. The same thing with my coat. Um, it was um, a very expensive coat, full length, heavy, very warm winter wool, um, winter coat. I, I think I got it on sale for around $500. It was that expensive. And the whole thing was cut inside. The, the lining was cut in all the places that uh, that people would look for drugs. The hem, the pockets, the lining on the side to put your hand um, between the, the, the wool uh, and, the, and, the, and the velvet lining. The whole thing was cut. It wasn't ripped, it was cut. I still have the coat. So I never relined it. I just got another one. So um, these are all evidence of uh, somebody coming into my home. The cops I heard from the worker outside the window and searching my home for drugs. 
this is all um, in um, part of painting me in a criminal light. As I said, I was working as an accountant. I wasn't even aware that this was going on. I noticed these things after they happened. In fact, I noticed a cut in the sofa um, years after it actually happened because I was so busy living my life that uh, I, I, some of these things I never even noticed. But it was going on to provide a cover, to accumulate a file, to paint me in a criminal light, to provide a cover for the trafficking that was going on at the time because I was flagged based on lies. So the cop who was flagging me was taking whoever it was that was feeding information into him as the truth and flagging me without questioning me. If they had questioned me or they had really investigated me, they would have found, of course, that I was going to work and I had a, um, a nine to 10 job. It was a nine to five because I was doing a lot of overtime um, and uh, I was coming home late and I was at work most of the time and doing other things as well that had absolutely nothing to do with drugs. I've never taken drugs. I can't take drugs. So uh, this was all a painting. I was painted in this light to cover the trafficking that was going on because since I was flagged, they, uh, the outsourced um, monitoring was um, given out to people in Scarborough. So again, I'm being harassed with being known in Scarborough as a prostitute. Well, this is how that happened. I was outsourced and these uh, um, monitors, quote unquote, which was really remote Johns and uh, they could be both male or female. Uh, these people were looking at me inside of my home so I had no privacy. So this is what it meant to be flagged and a target. Your privacy is taken away. So if you have no privacy and you're a prostitute, then why bother giving you your privacy? Anybody could see you anytime, anywhere, any place, anyhow, in your bedroom, bathroom, and so on. So that was a cover for the voyeurism ring, for um, the masturbation ring, for um, the, the, the remote rape ring. And eventually the idea was to get you into the physical side of the business. So this is where it started. I'm suspecting based on the harassment I get outside the window. So right now, as I said, it was ongoing. So let's fast forward to what's happening right now. So um, this morning I was updated by loud uh, remarks started with swearing that um, there is a warrant and um, this time it cannot be denied it's justified the team that is monitoring me from this building that includes um, neighbors um, has justified uh, for me uh, to be pulled in for a mental evaluation because something is wrong with me I'm always uh, verbalizing um, I'm talking to myself um, and whatever else that was reported to justify this warrant yet another time. So a warrant, another warrant is put on the books and if it's tried, if it's, um, the attempt is made to execute it and um, I'm not responsive, I got harassed with that as well. It's unresponsive, I'm unresponsive, they came and they couldn't find me then the executed warrant is in my file. I'm also harassed with, you're never gonna get a passport back again. You're never gonna be able to leave the country. All of this harassment is part of a conspiracy or else I wouldn't be harassed with it. The harassers and the people who are conspiring to do this is letting me know what they're doing or what they're about to do. Therefore, they're conspiring to do it, obviously. They're having meetings, they're collecting information, they're planning what to do step by step, what they're gonna take away from me, how they're gonna degrade me, um, what it is I like so they're gonna take away. Uh, so this is a plan, it's a plan. So it's a conspiracy, they're getting together to conspire to bring me down, degrade me, and destroy my life, my career, rape and murder me and dispose of me, experiment with me as well. So this is a conspiracy, it's a plan to do that, therefore a conspiracy, or else I wouldn't be harassed with it. Part of the, the, the terrorization program, the targeting program is to terrorize me. It is a terrorization program, which is exactly what's going on. Uh, since I was uh, picked up before and terrorized, 
uh, for a mental evaluation and terrorized, slammed against the wall, cuffed. Uh, when somebody outside the window talks about, Step is going to pick you up. The cops are going to come and get you. They're going to come and get you. That's terrorization because they're actually triggering the fear that I experienced when it happened the first time. That's, that's deliberate terrorization. So this is what's going on outside the window. Um, so uh, this is where it's at right now. So um, the, uh, the comments also include um, other informants from people other than the, in the building, the workplaces. Um, I'm hearing that um, certain people said I was trying to pick him up. The uh, manager who hired me in this, this, this uh, company, who I'm hearing about outside the window with this person's name, um, actually pursued me to offer me the job. And he knew beforehand, based on the harassment I got in the workplace once he hired me, that he knew about the, um, the file. He knew I was being monitored as a prostitute. So he hired me, then he reported, I heard, got harassed with this, that I was constantly hitting on, it, hitting on him. So every time I went to ask him a question or I interacted with him, um, it was twisted to me that I was hitting on him. Then he flagged me for that. Then he took the contract as a veil and he started passing me around to his clients. So obviously there is a criminal intent to hire me in the first place. Then it was never his intent. It was never his intention to keep me. It was his, his intention to hire me, piggyback on the report, flag me, get the contract, and then to sell me to other people and other companies. He's going to choose the other clients. In other words, he's going to traffic me for his own purpose take advantage, which is the whole idea of being a target. So this is where it's at right now. So every person I do business with um, is infiltrated. Lawyers, doctors, and I'm suspecting therapists, um, of course the family, uh, neighbors, co-workers, managers, headhunters, they're given the link and the password, they're given the file about me. So they could take advantage. So they could piggyback. So uh, th as I said, this is all meant to blackmail me into showing. So uh, for instance, uh, you hire a lawyer and uh, you want the lawyer obviously to do what you ask. Then you, the lawyer is in a position of power over you. So he will try to, knowing that you're a target, and he could do whatever he wants and get away with it. He will try to blackmail you into this remote sex slave uh, operation that's going on. Uh, you know, um, you, uh, I'll be looking tonight um, at six o'clock. Uh, this phrase will be put into a sentence to let you know that he's in on it. And um, if you do this, then you're going to get what you want, even though you're paying him. So anybody who you want something from will try this trick. If you do this, you're gonna get that, knowing that you're a target and he can report anything about you. He can then turn around and, said, and say, well, she's soliciting me because I'm registered up as a prostitute, so she's soliciting me. So two things are gonna happen. One, the, the flagging is gonna continue and the monitoring is gonna continue. And number two, that report is going to be used by the team to discipline you. In other words, turn up the power on you, as I just uh, demonstrated. Pain. Pain, um, uh, internal organ damage, and, rape, and uh, rape. They will rape you constantly. And I'm suspecting that uh, a whole lot of people in this building took part in this, uh, in this, um, this remote rape program in this building, 25 Bamberg Circle, because this is where it started. There's gangs in this building who is running this program because it started at 25 Bamberg Circle. The, the first flag started at 25 Bamberg Circle. That was never disclosed to me. The first notification that was put into the newspaper that I'm being harassed with came from 25 Bamberg Circle. I don't know who did it. 
I get harassed with a building superintendent's name. I don't know for sure that he did it, but I get harassed with the comment that he did it by another building superintendent. So it's going on 20 minutes, so I'm going to, to, um, to stop there. So I'm going to give you, before I stop, I'm going to give you a summarization of uh, of um, excuse me of the blood pressure reading so that's today this was um, the um, the reading right before I took this um, I did this video This was last night in the morning. This is the day before. So right now, my right obliques is, an, um, is hurting. And I'm gonna take a guess that internally there is inflammation because last night they turned up the power and, um, and I was in so much pain, I got up and, um, and I tweeted about it. And a few minutes after I tweeted, the power was turned down because I was getting huge palpitations when the power was turned up. So, as you can tell, um, I'm being kept in pain for most of the day. Talk to you another time.